What would you do if you could control your dreams? Would you fly, travel the universe, learn more about yourself, or manifest things in your life? Instead, overnight, we are dreaming of weird things that most of the time don't have much meaning to us, or maybe we are just not aware of the meaning. What if I tell you that absolutely every human being has this hidden ability which, if mastered, could allow us to control our dreams completely? That will enable us to use our dreaming hours to explore, learn more about ourselves, heal, and dive down the rabbit hole of our imagination. Before we continue, we'd like to thank our friends from Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. It's an incredible online educational platform that offers over 25,000 online classes. Skillshare's mission is to close the professional skills gap and provide universal access to high-quality learning. I really like their calligraphy classes, which teach you the ancient art of calligraphy, together with their illustration classes, which can help you bring to life all of your visions and ideas. Click the link in the description below and claim your two months of free access. The price after the free trial is around $10 per month. Explore thousands of classes and fuel your creativity and career with Skillshare. Lucid dreams are not something new. It's been known about and practiced since ancient times. It is part of the ancient Hindu practice of Yoga Nidra and the Tibetan practice of Dream Yoga. In the West, the concept of lucid dreams is also extremely old. Dreams had a privileged position in the foundations of Greek philosophy. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle all addressed their inquiries into the nature of reality to our nightly journeys. Lucid dreams were first clearly described by Aristotle in his treatise On Dreams. Aristotle writes, When one is asleep, there is something in consciousness which tells us that what presents itself is but a dream. The famous ancient physician Galen of Pergamon used lucid dreaming as part of his medical practice. Lucid dreaming may have played an integral part of the history of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad's Laylatul Miraj is an account of a nighttime vision that provided him with spiritual initiation. The 12th century Andalusian Sufi Ibn al-Arabi suggested that controlling thought in dreams is an essential ability for aspiring mystics. 300 years later, Sufi mystic Shamsuddin Lahiji recorded an inspiring night vision of the heavens that also may have been a lucid dream experience. Due to cultural and historical differences between the distinction of visions and dreams, it is impossible to know for sure if this account, as well as Prophet Muhammad's, occurred during sleep or vision states, but they are certainly lucid. Let's explore the scientific experiments and papers on lucid dreaming together with the well-known creators who practiced it to achieve their goals. In the end, we'll also share the most powerful methods which you can use to experience a lucid dream successfully. Even though a lot of weird and impossible things often happen in our dreams, we usually realize that it was a dream only after we wake up. Lucid dreaming is basically when you become awake or lucid in your dream, and when you realize that you are dreaming and that you are the dreamer. When you become lucid, you can take full control of your dream and then you can open yourself up to the possibilities of channeling the infinite creative potential of the human mind. Lucid dreaming was first scientifically proven in 1975, after Dr. Keith Hearn decided to perform an experiment, since subjective testimonies of lucid dreamers couldn't serve as proof of the phenomenon. For this experiment, Dr. Hearn was trying to receive conscious signs from the patients while they were still dreaming. If someone could signal the doctor from his dream, then this would undoubtedly prove that lucid dreams are real. When we dream, unlike the other parts of our body, our eyes can still move, and dreams happen during the rapid eye movement states, also known as REM states. What Dr. Hearn proposed is that if the patient could send conscious signs with his eyes, moving them in certain ways, 
while he was still dreaming, that would confirm that he was lucid during his dream. Dr. Hearn and the patients agreed on a set of eye movements. These signs would be a message sent by the patient from the dream world to our awake reality, which would confirm that the subject was fully lucid in his dream state. An eye tracking device would keep tracking and recording all the eye movements made from the patients, and the sign was seven to eight left to right eye movements. At the start of the experiment, the patients were making random eye movements while in REM sleep, as we all do when we sleep. These movements were completely random and are entirely different from the pre-agreed movements. Suddenly, when the patients became lucid, they then started to control their eye movements and did the pre-agreed left-to-right movement seven times, confirming that they were lucid. The results were very successful. Many more experiments were performed, and they all proved that the lucid dreaming phenomenon was real, and people who practiced it were completely conscious while they were in the dream world. But if lucid dreaming is real, and we can all do it, are there any benefits to it? Lucid dreaming is more than just having a vivid dream. It has an extra element to it. One can receive full control over the reality that he or she is experiencing. When we access this state, it is possible to access deep levels of the mind, which are otherwise inaccessible. While lucid dreaming, we are in direct contact with our subconscious, and it's possible to create and change programs and belief systems from the deepest levels of our minds. It's the same as changing the programs and settings of a computer directly from inside the control panel. The benefits of this incredible ability are genuinely marvelous. A recent experiment published by the Journal of Neuroscience determined that people with high dream lucidity reported having a higher ability to reflect on their own mental state. A group of scientists in Germany performed this large-scale research, and in the end, they found what's unique and different in the brain of people who regularly practice lucid dreaming. They conducted brain scans on several people who reportedly lucid dream often. They found that the area of the brain responsible for self-reflection, among others, is significantly larger among lucid dreamers. The anterior prefrontal cortex is also responsible for executive filtering, deciding which actions and thoughts are relevant and which are irrelevant. On the public release of the research, Dr. Elisa Filovich who is the leader of the study, stated, Our results indicate that self-reflection in everyday life is more pronounced in persons who can easily control their dreams. The researchers further wanted to know whether metacognitive skills can be trained. In a follow-up study, they intended to train volunteers in lucid dreaming to examine whether this improved the capability of self-reflection, and the results were again successful. Apparently, lucid dreaming can help us become more self-aware, find answers, improve creativity, increase visualization power, help us heal from past traumas and fears, and so much more. Once you know you are dreaming, you can do anything your mind can imagine without obeying the laws of society and physics, allowing you to unleash the full potential of your brain and directly access, communicate, and rewrite your subconscious mind. Throughout our history, there have been many geniuses, such as Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, and many others, who used lucid dreaming to help on their greatest achievements. In the book, My Inventions, the Autobiography of Nikola Tesla, Tesla stated, Every night, and sometimes during the day, when alone, I would start on my journeys, see new places, cities, and countries, live there, meet people, and make friendships and acquaintances. And however unbelievable, it is a fact that they were just as dear to me as those in actual life, and not a bit less intense in their manifestations. This I did constantly until I was about 17, when my thoughts turned seriously to invention. Then I observed to my delight that I could visualize with the greatest facility. 
I needed no models, drawings, or experiments. I could picture them all as real in my mind. My method is different. I do not rush into actual work. When I get an idea, I start at once building it up in my imagination. I change the construction, make improvements, and operate the device in my mind. It is absolutely immaterial to me whether I run my turbine in thought or test it in my shop. I even note if it is out of balance. There is no difference whatever. The results are the same. In this way, I am able to rapidly develop and perfect a conception without touching anything. When I have gone so far as to embody in the invention every possible improvement I can think of and see no fault anywhere, I put into concrete form this final product of my brain. Invariably, my device works as I conceived that it should, and the experiment comes out exactly as I planned it. In 20 years, there has not been a single exception. Why should it be otherwise? Tesla was known to possess extraordinary mental capacities, such as acute hearing, and off-the-chart visualization skills that were so vivid that he wouldn't need any notes for his thought experiments. His visualization skills allowed him to conduct dream experiments while completely awake in the lab. Basically, he had a virtual lab in his mind. Tesla was one level above the lucid dreaming state, and as a result, he could do experiments on things in a faster way than most of us can. Another famous scientist, Albert Einstein, made a discovery that would change our whole understanding of physics and the universe, and apparently this discovery was made during a lucid dream. As it happens, he came to the extraordinary scientific achievement, discovering the principle of relativity, after having a vivid dream. Einstein's Dreams by Alan Lightman is now a modern classic a collage of stories dreamed by Albert Einstein in 1905 on the brink of his breakthrough discoveries. In one aspect of Einstein's imagination, time is circular, so that people are fated to repeat their triumphs and failures over and over. In another, time stands still, where lovers cling together in eternity. In another yet, time is a nightingale trapped by a bell jar. There are some quotes from Einstein, such as, Reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. Imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attractions. And time is an illusion. Through these quotes, it seemed that he constantly questioned if reality was real or just an illusion. And usually, these questions are normal for those who have experienced lucid dreams. Since Einstein didn't officially announce he was a lucid dreamer, we can only speculate if he used this amazing capacity to unleash his full brain potential. But in any way, it seems clear that he used powerful visualization techniques to discover some of his theories, including the theory of relativity. Srinivasa Ramanujan, who is perhaps the greatest mathematician in the entire history of mankind, also practiced lucid dreaming. The mathematical genius made substantial contributions to the analytical theory of numbers, elliptical functions, continued fractions, and infinite series, and proved more than 3,000 mathematical theorems in his lifetime. Ramanujan stated that the insight for his work came to him in his dreams on many occasions. He said that throughout his life, he repeatedly dreamed of a Hindu goddess known as Namakal. Once he becomes lucid in his dream, the goddess appeared and presented him with complex mathematical formulas over and over, which he could then test and verify upon waking. One such example was the infinite series for Pi. Describing one of his many insightful math dreams, Ramanujan said, While asleep, I had an unusual experience. There was a red screen formed by flowing blood, as it were. I was observing it. Suddenly, a hand began to write on the screen. 
I became all attention. That hand wrote a number of results in elliptic integrals. They stuck to my mind. As soon as I woke up, I committed them to writing. I am sure that as soon as we started to talk about lucid dreaming, you remembered the movie Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo has publicly announced that even before this movie, he was already a lucid dreamer and practiced this very often. The famous psychologist Carl Jung was a strong believer in the inner power and the power of the unconscious mind, thus studying dream interpretation and extensively recording his own dreams. One of his most notorious books, The Red Book, was a trip into self-discovery and a massive collection of his dreams, fantasies, and psychedelic drawings. So I have come to the right place, Jung wrote in one fictional dialogue. I have wandered a long time through the world, seeking those like you who sit upon a high tower on the lookout for things unseen. For someone who has extensively studied the power of dreams, it wouldn't be surprising if he was also a lucid dreamer. Stephen King also allegedly received inspiration from his lucid dream states. He writes about lucid dreaming in his 1995 novel, Insomnia, an extraordinary tale about an insomniac who begins to see brilliant auras and then more disturbing hallucinations as his condition deteriorates. Another clue that Stephen King may be a lucid dreamer is how he finds inspiration for his novels. In an interview with UK reporter Stan Nichols on the inspiration for Misery, King said, Like the ideas for some of my other novels, that too came to me in a dream. And in an interview with Naomi Apple, King said, I've always used dreams the way you'd use mirrors to look at something you couldn't see head on, the way that you use a mirror to look at your hair in the back. To me, that's what dreams are supposed to do. I think that dreams are a way that people's minds illustrate the nature of their problems, or maybe even illustrate the answers to their problems in symbolic language. Stephen King also said, In both writing and sleeping, we learn to be physically still. At the same time, we are encouraging our minds to unlock from the humdrum rational thinking of our daytime lives. And as your mind and body grow accustomed to a certain amount of sleep each night, six hours, seven, maybe the recommended eight, so can you train your waking mind to sleep creatively and work out the vividly imagined waking dreams, which are successful works of fiction. King often referred to writing as similar to awake dreaming and how it is important to keep yourself undisturbed in your writing process, just like when you are sleeping so that you can come to that dream state and access the full creative potential of your brain, or how others would say the full creative potential of your subconscious mind. These are just a handful of the world's wonderful personalities who have dabbled in lucid dreaming. Look at how much knowledge and inspiration they've each given back to the world. Lucid dreaming opens new doors. It's no coincidence that so many great minds have all found knowledge and ideas in their dreams. By connecting and directly communicating with our subconscious mind, we can unleash the full potential of our brain and truly fulfill our life purpose by creating. After all the information shared, you're probably eager to try lucid dreaming, wondering how to start and how to do it. The true mastery of lucid dreaming doesn't happen in the dream world, however. It starts in waking life. The first thing you need to do before thinking of lucid dreaming is to make your bedroom hospitable to dreaming. Dreams occur during rapid eye movement, the last stage of your sleep cycle. And to get to that stage, you need to get deep and better quality of sleep. Keep your bedroom as dark, cool, and quiet as possible. Before you go to bed, follow a calming bedtime routine. Engage in relaxing activities like unplugging from your electronics, taking a warm bath, or practicing aromatherapy, or meditation. Keep a dream journal. A key step to successful lucid dreaming is tuning into your dreams. 
keep a dream journal by your bed. And the moment you wake up, write down everything you remember from your dream. If you think faster than you write, try recording your memories as a voice memo on your phone. There are many dream journal apps out there, so don't worry. Recognize your dream signs. Don't just record your dreams in your journal and leave it be. Review your dream journal regularly and look for any patterns. Track your dreams to learn the themes and landscapes. If you dream of a past relative or of your childhood home, your mind will start to recognize this as a dream instantly. The goal is to become aware of these motifs so your brain can alert you in your sleeping state. The more aware you are of your dream signs, the quicker you'll be able to identify when you are in a dream state. Perform reality checks. If you want to become aware and conscious in your dreams, you have to start questioning the daily reality as it's just another dream, which it might be. The best way to train your brain to question reality is to take at least five breaks a day and ask yourself, wait a minute, is this a dream? Is any of this real? A powerful technique that can help you find out if you're dreaming is to continually look at the clock and ask yourself if this is a dream. If you're indeed in a dream, the clock will behave very weird, probably spinning backward or rotating like crazy. If you see that in your dream, you will understand you're dreaming and you'll instantly become lucid. That is why this is a very powerful way to train your brain to question reality. You can do reality checkups by looking at a page of text in a book, then quickly look away and back. In a dream, the text is likely to change, but in the real world, it will stay the same. You might also closely observe your hands and feet. These tend to be distorted in dreams. Another thing you can do is to try to push the index finger of one hand through the palm of your opposite hand. Do so with the expectation that you'll be able to make this happen while asking yourself both before and after whether you're dreaming. In a dream, this would actually happen, although it wouldn't work in reality. By keeping an open mind and questioning your reality both before and after, you help yourself truly recognize whether you're dreaming or not. Plus, by making this a regular habit, you eventually might repeat this same experiment in your dream. And when your finger goes through, you'll know you're dreaming. Set an intention. Before going to sleep, state, I will remember my dreams. I will have a lucid dream. This affirmation sets within your brain and body the fertile possibility for it to occur. When you can enter into a sleep state with a clear intention of what you want to experience, your brain can easily conspire to orchestrate this in lucid dream time. When you wake up from a dream, stay in bed as you write down anything you remember in your dream journal. Then close your eyes and try to go back to sleep, focusing on the dream. Play the dream out in your mind, but this time, imagine that you were aware that you were dreaming. Keep focusing on this as you fall back asleep. You can also try this alternate method known as wake-induced lucid dreaming. When your alarm goes off, do your best to keep your eyes closed. You want to go back to sleep as soon as possible, so don't worry about writing down your dream in the journal. As you lie in bed with your eyes closed, keep your mind focused and aware in order to increase your chances of experiencing a lucid dream. However, know that by keeping your mind awake while letting your body drift to sleep, you may experience a sensation known as sleep paralysis. This can be very unsettling for some people as your body will feel unable to move as your body enters back into sleep. As it happens, just remind yourself that you are safe and that you are doing this so that you can lucid dream. Use the wake back to bed technique. The wake back to bed technique involves scheduling alarms to maximize your chances of waking up during REM sleep so that when you fall back asleep, you are more likely to re-enter your dream. 
set an alarm to go off six or seven hours after you first fall asleep. Only choose one of those times. The six or seven hour mark is more likely to catch you during a REM stage of sleep, since REM sleep lasts longer in the second portion of the night. When your alarm goes off, stay awake for 30 to 60 minutes. After writing your dream down in your journal, get out of bed and do something. You want your brain to wake up while your body stays sleepy. Then get back into bed, focus on your dream, and try to fall back asleep. We don't recommend this method as a long-term practice as it disrupts your REM sleep, resulting in sleep deprivation, which has both short-term and long-term consequences to your health. Take up video gaming. If you'd like to play more video games, here's a great excuse. This 2017 study found that frequent video gaming is associated with a better ability to remember your dreams, both lucid and regular. The correlation makes sense, as video gamers are frequently immersed in a fictional, highly vibrant world, where they have control over their movements and some aspects of the plot. According to this study, frequent video gaming may boost your dream recall. Just be sure to put down the controller at least one hour before bed, so that you can get your mind into a more restful state before sleep. Try to keep your dream going. If you begin experiencing lucid dreams, congratulations! Don't be upset if you have a lot of false starts at first. In the beginning, it's very common to have difficulty spending a long time in the dream. Many beginning lucid dreamers get so excited by the realization that they're in a lucid dream that they inadvertently wake themselves up, or their mind is just getting used to the sensation that they don't stay in it for very long. To prolong your dream, try one of these tips. Pro-lucid dreamers suggest that these help establish you in the dream state and distract your mind from the physical sensations of waking up. Fall backwards or spin around in the dream. Rub your hands together in the dream. Continue doing whatever you are just doing in the dream and try to convince yourself you're still in the dream. If you want to dive deeper into lucid dreams and master the lucid dreaming techniques, you can join Danilo from Hollow Vibes, who has learned and experienced lucid dreaming during his 49 Days Darkness Retreat and has recently published this incredible video on lucid dreaming. Just click the top right corner to watch it or on the link in the description. Contrary to what most people think, Lucid dreaming is a very safe and natural way of gaining control over our mind and thought processes, and practicing and learning how to become lucid in your dreams will make you more aware of your actions and surroundings, and it will also give us the ability to experience anything we imagine, giving us confidence and trust that even in our awake world, we can accomplish anything we desire. If you have ever had a lucid dream, please share your experience in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to click the link in the description below to claim your two month free membership at Skillshare. We're sure you'll find some amazing courses there and learn many new skills.